It's time for another camera matchup. This time we're looking for the perfect pocketable 40mm equivalent camera. In the past I've made a video where I determined that the Ricoh GR2 is the camera I would choose if I could only have one. Later on I did another where the winner was the Ricoh GR3, both 28mm equivalent pocket shooters. But a lot of folks asked me to comment on options with longer lenses, like 35mm. But in my opinion that's a pretty boring focal length, so I will instead go for 40-ish millimeter equivalent alternatives that are somewhat pocketable in a winter jacket. Let's meet the contestants. The first one is no shocker. The Ricoh GR3's 40mm equivalent sister the GR3X needs no further introduction. Next we have the tiny but mighty Pentax Q, represented here by the Q7 with the standard 8.5mm f1.9 prime. A small powerhouse featured in my longest camera review ever. The only full frame in the lineup is the small and very cleverly designed Rolly 35TE sporting a 40mm f3.5 Tessar collapsible lens. The cheapest in the lineup is Fuji's old and forgotten XM1, the most affordable X trans sensor camera ever made here with the original 27mm f2.8. Another often overlooked camera is the compact X flagship, the Panasonic GX9 with the legendary 20mm f1.7 pancake. Last but not least we have the fastest operating mirrorless camera on the market, the controversial Nikon ZFC with the kit 28mm f2.8 Prime. Obviously there are hundreds of other available 40mm equivalent camera options out there. If I could only find my M to L adapter I would throw the Sigma FBL in the mix. But I must draw the line somewhere, this is in my opinion a good and wide selection, both in features and price. We will compare the cameras using these categories. First off, we compare the size. The Pentax Q is the smallest and lightest in the lineup, and that's with interchangeable lenses. Very close to the Rolay, which I must add is full frame. The Ricoh is in the same league, so they each get a point. Build quality. The Rolay is on top. It's all metal. The Pentax takes second because you have the choice of an all metal original Q or a plastic version. In third we find the Ricoh. The rest is a mixture of metal and plastic and shares fourth place, with the Nikon being the sturdier of the three. Price. Both the XM1 and Q can be found for next to nothing on the used market with some patience and willpower. Also the GX9 is surprisingly cheap these days, so are Micro Four Thirds lenses. The Ricoh and Nikon are a bit too new to be bargains. And with the Rolay you can find it for 5 bucks in a flea market or for 5000 bucks in some collectible edition online. Bells and whistles. There really isn't a clear winner here, but the Pentax has the edge with interchangeable lenses with leaf shutters, built-in NDs, in-body stabilization and a built-in flash. Second place is shared by the Panasonic for having, among other things, IBIS, a tilt screen, a tilt EVF as well as a built-in flash, and the Nikon for its excellent control layout combined with a mode switch and things like highlight weighted metering. The Ricoh is only missing the interchangeable lenses to snag a point compared to the others. The Rolly simply doesn't have anything that doesn't control exposure, and surely that's worth the bonus point. 
ergonomics and design. The Ricoh is by far the most comfortable camera to shoot and the buttons are right where you need them. The rest gets a point each for at least being one-handed, except for the Nikon and Rolei. The later do however get one point for the sheer engineering that has gone into this thing. Now let's look at displays. The GX9 and XM1 both get two points each for having glorious tilt screens. The Ricoh and Pentax gets one point each for a regular fixed screen. And the Rolex gets one for not needing a screen. The Nikon gets a minus one for a fully articulated. Viewfinders. The Rolex is the only camera that has a viewfinder and receives two points. The Nikon and Panasonic gets one point each for having dual displays with a built-in loop. If we look at focus speed, the Rolex doesn't have autofocus but it can be pre-focused while turned off and in all honesty, zone focus is still way quicker than autofocus. The GR3X might not be the fastest but it has a decently fast autofocus and also a snap and full press snap which is basically the same as being able to be preset to a zone. So easy win for the Ricoh. The rest is just fine and it's lens dependent anyway. When it comes to operational speed, from the intent of taking an image to actually snapping it, in other words turning it on, set the meter and focus, compose and shoot, the Pentax, Panasonic and Fuji are all basically the same, like any camera. The bronze goes to the Rolex for being able to be all preset and ready to go. The Ricoh gets a silver since it can do all that, but one-handed. But the by far fastest operational speed sits in the Nikon. Its ability to be preset in different modes at the same time and then quickly switch between them is what sets it apart. You can for example be out shooting aperture priority and then at the same time have a preset shutter speed for fast action which you can then gauge by a simple flick of a switch. It really is a missed opportunity by Fuji not to have a camera featuring both a program wheel and regular manual controls. Weird that Nikon beat them to it already with the DF. The ZFC also has the DF's awesome ISO setup where the dial quickly sets the high cap for your auto ISO. If we compare image quality by pixel peeping, we learn almost nothing. Especially since it's lens dependent in three of the cameras. And frankly, this is just stupid. So the only one getting a point is the Rolex for not participating in the side by side. If we instead look at real images, it's as subjective as comparing resolution. But it's my list and I would say that when it comes to how the images look, color science and how they behave in Lightroom, I prefer them in the order of Rolex, Panasonic, Pentax, Nikon, Ricoh and Fuji. For video, there's only two having video worthwhile and that's the Panasonic and Nikon. The Panasonic wins due to its excellent stabilization and screen. The Rolex gets a bonus point for not needing such a feature. So there we go, like I said, there are hundreds of options available not on this list and comparing cameras is always subjective. Let us know which 40mm equivalent you prefer down in the comments. Until next time, goodbye!